Hey, Ron. We did what it. Up? Sorry, Ron. How you doing? What 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 can I say and what can I not say in this? Um... Um, you can say you can. This is this is happy hour. You can say whatever you want. So there's no limits on language and everything like that. Uh, we're we're on Instagram. We're gonna we're gonna assume. I guess it's not an adult only app. Uh, as you can see from the comments here, some people are are weighing in with their own profanities. Um, be yourself. Because I was just about to comment when my picture came onto your site. What a good looking motherfucker. But anyway, I won't say that because there are probably there are probably uh, kids watching. K I D S S. You are you are good looking mother effer i will say i will agree with that mr ron perlman it is right, so good i got you I'm, I'm, so... I'm, I'm, I'm also glad you got the memo that we're wearing black t-shirts and i don't know right. what you're drinking but i, I have I, got, I, ha I have some wine what do you have i have um, a little uh, julio 70 tequila oh. on the rock cheers cheers baby happy quarantine happy quarantine i was wondering i was wondering I feel like we should have taken a poll on what you'd be drinking. I was, I would have figured you maybe for like scotch or whiskey or bourbon, but tequila makes sense too. Tequila makes sense. I'm just sense. in my, I'm just, and you know, it's, it's, it's not, I have no, nothing against any of those things that you listed. Uh -huh. I'm just in my tequila period right now. <laughs> and, uh, you know, somebody suggested, I think more vegan. And so, you know, uh, this is as vegan as it gets for the pearl. Amen. I hear you. Uh, well, I also want to do another, another before we get in, in further into things. I want to do a toast out there to to all of the the first responders, all of the doctors and the nurses and the medics on the front line of this battle. You guys are heroes. To the people still working at the grocery store, still delivering food and packages. Thank you so much. Um, we we owe you all a debt of gratitude. So cheers to you guys. Cheers. I will drink to that. Yes, and in and in in uh, in a profound sense of gratitude, and yeah. uh, you know, I I was thinking today. Hang on, let me drink because when you drink, you're supposed to drink, right? You got it. You got to. I'm gonna drink again. I was thinking today about how, you know, um, ninety five percent of the population has been forced into, you know, dialing it back to zero. And then there's 5% of the population that are crazy busier than they've ever been before, you know, and, and those, those things that become essential during times like this, like health workers are busier than they've ever been before. Mm -hmm. Probably grocers, probably the guys who stock, uh, you know, the, the, the warehouses that deliver groceries cannot work fast enough, cannot deliver fast enough. The people who are, you know, uh, checking people out at grocery stores mm -hmm. cannot work fast enough. And everybody also, while all this is happening, I was thinking this because I got a call into my shrink, you know, and I'm, I'm sure he's not calling me back because he, he's probably fucking busy. Than probably, he's probably, yeah. You know, I mean, you know, you know, imagine my neuroses times, you know, however many uh, yeah. people depend on him and his ilk. So uh, it's really a strange, unique moment mm. um where uh i you know i mean I, I i'm 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 turning 70 in about a week if i make it and I, there's nothing there's this is the most unprecedented moment that i've ever experienced there's nothing that even has come close mm -hmm. to the situation we find ourselves in and i'm just i'm really glad you toasted the people who are obviously you know putting themselves in harm's way for the greater good, but I'm I'm also thinking of people who live paycheck to paycheck and who right, right. who don't have a great companion in their home that they can bounce off of or they can be held by or they can be buoyed by when they're feeling a little uncertain and you know a little scared about you know like whether they're going to make the rent and whether they're going to be able to put food on their table you know. Mm -hmm. um, my heart goes out to everybody and um, um, just gutted by uh, what the more vulnerable in our society is having to, to deal with uh, yeah. in this moment. Well said, well said. And also to, to everyone who's been, you know, directly impacted, whether it's a, a friend or family member 
um, who, who's come down with the virus or, or, or passed away, you know, our, our best wishes to, to, to everyone out there. Um, but we're, we're going to get through this together. Um, Ron, it's great to see your face and do this. I, I can tell how excited people are to, to have you on this happy hour. I got to tell you something on, on a personal note. I feel like it's, it's, it's kind of fitting that you're one of our first guests for this. This is a new, this is a new show. This is only our second episode because you were, I don't know if you remember this, you were our very first guest for a series we do now called Roll Recall on Yahoo. You came into our studios in Santa Monica about five or six years ago. It was our old studios. And we, it was like a career retrospective. We walked through all of your roles. And that was the first time we had done that show. It was a pilot. We were just testing the format. We knew it was going to be great content with, with you. Uh, and it's gone on to be our flagship series. Everyone has done it. We've done them with Pacino, with Schwarzenegger, with Shirley MacLaine, with Kevin Costner, with Morgan Freeman, Edward Norton, Nicole Kidman. <coughs> and you were the first. You were our first. So clearly you're a trendsetter is, I guess, what I'm saying. But or, or maybe Well, obviously, the, the show that, that – that we're on right now is is uh, is is going to go through the roof, and, and that's know, what I'm thinking. That's what people I'm thinking. are going to be people are going to be falling all over themselves. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. You got, you got Perlman. How do I get on there? Yep, yep. In fact, now in fact now I'm going to go to all those people. I'm going to go to Pacino, and I'm going to go to Coster, and I'm going to go to. Uh, I know half of them are on on Instagram, but hey, it's it's worth a shot. Uh, yeah, but it was a great it was a when great. When you go chat. to Costner, don't mention my name because we're not you know we're not on. Uh, you're not, you're not, yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. No, we're not we're not on good good yeah. footing right now. Is there is there is there a story there you want to get off your chest? He doesn't know that, and there's yeah. no truth to it. But I'm just saying shit. <laughs> I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to poke the bear here. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it was uh, for those of you online. Uh, check it out. Just search "Roll Recall Ron Perlman" uh, for for fans out there. We talked Quest for Fire, Beauty and the Beast, Chrono, City of Lost Children, Hellboy, Star Trek, Sons of Anarchy, all of your amazing projects up until that point five or six years ago. You've done plenty more since, including your new film Clover, which we definitely got to talk about. But first, first, I've got to commend you about something because there was a story that ran this week. Uh, which brought up the fact, and I think it was already out there, but it kind of dug a little bit deeper about the time that you saw Harvey Weinstein at an event and you got back at him uh, for being kind of a dick to you by, I believe, peeing on your hand and then shaking his. Yes. <laughs> I think I can speak for 99.9% .9 of humanity when I say, well done, well done. So well, thank you. I mean, you know, the, the, uh, it, it's, it's amazing. I mean, what, what social media has shown us is that for everybody who loves something, there's going to be at least another person who just hates that same thing. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know what it was about. Um, there was, there was, a, there was a, a, a day around, it was a slow news day, I guess, about a year and a half ago. And I tweeted that out. Did you ever tell you about the time when I pissed on my hand in Chicago? You know, and um, I got a great deal of love for the story, but I also got a really great, great deal of hate. And, you know, we're sensitive people, us mm -hmm. people in show business. You know, we come on strong, but, you know, it hurts us when, when somebody, you know, like, you know. Uh, and I really was hurt when Donald Trump Jr. Um, tweeted out, um, you know, how much disdain he had for the fact that, you know, all I did, you know, in, 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 in a moment when I could have probably saved hundreds of thousands of women's lives was pee on my hand. Like, what a lame choice that is this, was. Is this true? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But one of the first, one of the first comments that came up when I tweeted out the story was, you know, DJ JR, um, you know, saying, can you imagine if you had the balls to do something other than pee on your hand, how many women's lives you might have saved? And um, that's when I realized we were living in a very, very weird reality. Yeah. Because um, you do the math. Right. It was it was year, it was years ago. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm sure you had an inkling. I mean, you had a personal interaction with him. I'm sure you had an inkling at, at his reputation just for being a, a raging a-hole. I don't think anybody realized just how bad it was. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's 
like everybody knew that he was um um like uh a real dark cat really dark cat but he had so much power and and he was in a position to um affect so many people's lives and bottom lines that it was one of those examples where somebody was able to to function in an, a, an incredibly aberrant uh, manner of of you know behaviors because of the amount of power that he had and what that did by you know finally enough people lining up to to um I mean, I'm, I'm sure we're not we're, we're not we're not here to talk about this particular subject. But yeah. what it does is it calls to mind, you know, people who are in, in power and who who have the ability to um, lord that over people who are um, can be decimated and taken advantage of because of how badly they need to put food on their table. And it's just it's a. Um, Anyway, I'm rambling. I'm sorry. Yeah. You know what happens when you invite me to cat cocktail hour? I don't, I don't always make sense, but I hope you understand what the fuck I'm saying. Here. I, I think I can speak for everybody joining in. We're, we're with, we're with you right now. We're with you. Cheers. Anyway, I peed on my hand and I shook his because he said, "Don't, don't forget, Ron. You know, you need to respect me. Come shake my hand when you see me, okay?" Mm -hmm. I said, "Sure, will, Harv." <laughs> Is that a move you've used other times? That was a one-off. That, that was one. The, the, the one and only time I've used that move. And there aren't a whole lot of people I would use that move for. I mean, mm. don't get me wrong. There are a couple more out there. Yeah, you know. yeah. I can, um, I can imagine. I'll, I'll, I'll report back to you uh, in five okay. years. You won't okay. let me on the show by then because you'll be so popular, like, you know, interviewing Al Pacino and Arnold Schwarzenegger, <laughs> that I won't be able to get on the, the, the five well, you know what I, you know what I've been saying about this show. This is like the first show I've ever launched that I actually wouldn't mind if it's if it was canceled, and that's because that would mean we're all going back to our normal lives and normal happy hours, and we wouldn't be doing interviews like this. So, you know what? Hopefully, I'm not, hopefully this show is not on in five years. Though, so, you know what? Maybe this just becomes the new normal. People are going to be like, or, why, why or, am I going to do an interview in person? I'll just I'll just get on my phone. You, but you'll start off, you know, uh, you know doing this thing because of the circumstances we're living in and then the popularity of the thing and the format right. will become synonymous with like your genius and Fine. years and years from now you'll want to keep yeah. doing it the way you're doing it you know when we, we won't we'll hardly have remembered why ron i'm not i'm not going to disagree with you there i'm not going to disagree. no you mustn't, you mustn't especially disagree with you launching this <laughs> because otherwise i might pee on my hand <laughs> Let's talk some Clover. Uh, congrats on your new film. Really enjoyed it. Uh, feels kind of like a throwback to, I think, like a 90s crime thriller comedy. A uh, mob com, I've heard it described as. Probably has some, like, Tarantino, some Scorsese influence. F reminded me a lot of uh, Boondock Saints, actually, I got to say, which is uh, a favorite of mine from the 90s. Um, I also have to say, one of my favorite parts is the fact that you open the movie and, the, and, and, it's, a, and it's a killer scene. One of my least favorite parts, uh, you're not in it enough for my personal taste, but you know, you make an impression. Uh, but what can you tell us in, in your own words about this, this film and, and what attracted you to it? Well, I love the script. Um, you know, um, John Abrahams uh, sent me this thing and he also sent me a link to another film that he had directed. And I, I love the script enough to go, let me see what a movie looks like at the hands of this filmmaker. And I loved what I saw there. Mm -hmm. And then I saw the rest of the people that were involved in it. So right off the bat, I, I knew that I was uh, in great company. The rest of it is basically, is there something about the character that, you know, you connect with that, you know, makes you passionate about walking in his shoes, you know, occupying, you know, whatever intellectual, spiritual space this guy is meant to occupy. Mm -hmm. And um, the answer was resoundingly, yes. I mean, this guy is twisted and sick and mm -hmm. really, really, you know, like a character who answers to all of the questions of like, what are the most interesting, most um, 
amazingly overblown qualities in the human condition that make you want to like not look away. Mm -hmm. And this guy probably, you know, was in the top one percentile of the answers to those questions. Mm -hmm. And so it made it, you know, like something that looked like it was going to be great fun to do. And um, boom, you know, I ended up doing it. I'm going to tell all your fans out there uh, that this is a must see for you guys because Mr. Perlman monologues his ass off within the, you don't even have to wait like 10 minutes in the movie. I mean, it's it, boom. It comes, it comes right at you. It comes right at you. The, the a classic Ron Perlman monologue. So uh, the Culver's on demand. You guys are going to, you guys are going to dig this movie. Um, but yeah, great character. M Mr. Wiley, I think his name is kind mm -hmm. of, kind of ambiguous, kind of dark, super powerful, super rich. Um, I assume that was your, your house that you, you guys filmed in. Yes, of course. Yes, yes. I, I have I a house. I have a house in every city, <laughs> in every state. Yeah. In the in the contiguous United States and some parts of Europe as well. Mm -hmm. A few, mainly in Switzerland, where I keep my money. Yeah. Uh, well, but yes, <laughs> that was my that was my house. Uh, I want I want to ask you about now, that. Also, the one I'm sitting in now is my house, and and probably, if you go back and look at your records, the one you're sitting in now, I probably own as well. I didn't know. I wasn't aware. Now I got to look at the deed. I thought we bought it, but now now you're making me think twice. You you just check I out I I <laughs> what what bank you bought it from, and I own that too. Yeah. Well, I want to ask about where you filmed it because you guys actually filmed this in my hometown, Buffalo, New York. Are you a Buffalo boy? I'm a Buffalo boy. Yeah. Yeah. How was your experience there? You know, um, anytime I get a chance to revisit the Anchor Bar, I'm a happy puppy. Yes, the home of the original chicken wings. Hot, hot, hot wings. Yep. And if yep. you haven't uh, tried original buffalo hot wings with blue cheese sauce, little celery and carrots on the side for dipping purposes, mm -hmm. just to say you had some veggies <laughs> along with your fried food, yeah. um, you haven't lived. In fact, the first time I went to Buffalo was like 1970-something or another. I can't remember to do a play uh, at the arena stage. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was the first time I tried a, a, a buffalo wing from the original Anchor Bar, which is where they got invented. Nice. And I always swore that if I ever owned my own private jet, the very first trip I would take is to Buffalo to get wings. Amen. That's you know what? how much, uh, it, that's how I, I was affected by that. I, I knew we were I knew we were birds of a feather because uh, I would do the same thing. Of course, you know I could also see my mom there too. But uh, you know, uh, um, but yeah, yeah. I'm, well, I'm pro first the wings and then mom. You know, <laughs> exactly, like exactly. Works. I got to give a shout out because I actually saw one of them just come up. Um, a couple of a couple of people I know worked on the movie. Matt Quinn, who is the cinematographer. He and I, I I'm a filmmaker on side. He, he and I worked on some projects there together. Uh, also, JJ Alfieri who plays Gus, uh, the bartender. I just saw him come up. Uh, he's, yeah. in, he's in the chat with us as well. Um, I want I want to ask you about uh, a, a moment early on because I think it's one of the best moments in the movie, uh, where there's a there's a cut to a photo of you and President Donald Trump. You're shaking hands. Uh, you're clearly friends. Um, I don't think that was a real photo, was that? It might have been a little bit uh, photoshopped. <laughs> it might have been. Yeah. Um, it's not that you know. I wasn't in the same room as the Donald on occasion, a couple of occasions, but there weren't that many that were chronicled. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, uh, that was, um, you know, I, I, I kind of, um, you know, what, what an actor does when an actor begins to create a role is create, he creates a kind of a, a silent biography of, all of the events of his life so that when he comes onto the set, you know, he has a bunch of things that only he knows about himself mm -hmm. that are details that affect, you know, how he walks, how he talks, you know, what his point of view is, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's part of it. And I was convinced that I was Donald Trump's uh, number one donor. Mm. Um, Mr. Wiley was, was the Donald owed, Mr. Wiley, a great debt of gratitude. Okay. Not, not just gratitude. Yes. And, and of course, the, the brilliance in that, 
in that in that moment is if anyone follows you on Twitter, um, they know how you truly feel about Donald Trump. <laughs> Do you want to sum it up for us? <laughs> no, no, you just, you just go to Pro Mutations, and you know, I mean, and you'll, 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 you'll find out. You'll find out. Yeah, yeah. You'll, uh, I want to. We we you'll either love me or hate me. Yeah, there's no yeah. in between. Cheers to you. Uh, I want to take some questions from these guys. And like I said, I hope you guys are drinking along with us because this is this is the, we're all in this together. We're all in this quarantine together, and we're all literally in this happy hour together right now. Um, so mm -hmm. if you guys have any questions, uh, let us know. We got Brooklyn East. Stay home, stay safe, stay safe. So this can be over already. That's what we're doing. Clay is a legend. Um, somebody that's, wants to. That's not a question. <laughs> that is not. That is not. That's just a truism. You're right. 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 Um, Anybody oh, have a question? This is, well, this is a this is a related question. Um, would you would you use that piss handshake again if you saw you know the gentleman we were just speaking of? You know, um, it was it was kind of you know an impulsive moment. Um, mm -hmm. You kind of had to be there. I mean, yeah. you know, I called the guy up at eleven o'clock in the morning to. Um, Asked him if I could go to the Amfar event at the Cannes Film Festival, which is the at the time the biggest AIDS charity that there was. It was chaired by Elton John and Elizabeth Taylor, and Harvey Weinstein was on the board as well. And it was something that was near and dear to my heart. I'd lost a lot of friends to, and family to AIDS and stuff, and so uh, I wanted to attend. And he returned the call at five thirty in the afternoon, thinking that he was returning the call to the other Ron Perlman, the guy who owns Revlon and all of the Bahamas. Ah. And he, I'm sure he has a lot of other things that he owns. Mm -hmm. And he thought he was returning that Ron Perlman's call. And when he got on the phone with me, he actually said, wait, is this the actor, Ron Perlman? And I go, uh, yeah, Harvey, it is. He goes, I'm not in the ticket business, Ron. I can't give you tickets to an event. What do you think I am? And I said, Harvey, 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 calm down. It's okay. I already have a ticket in the, in the, in the span of the afternoon. It took you for you to call me back. I was able to talk to another friend of mine who invited me to sit at his table. He goes, oh, you're coming? And I said, yes, I'm coming. He goes, well, you better make sure you shake my hand out of respect. You did, and you so did. It was kind of an impulsive <laughs> thing, you know. I don't think I'm going to pull that move ever again on anybody else. But, right, but yeah. it was kind of tailor made to a specific time and a specific place and one specific motherfucker. And I'm sure I'm not supposed to use that word because there are KIDSs watching the show. And so I apologize. But I will say this to all the kids who are watching you're going to hear those words in the world. Yeah. You're going I like to hear how you, them like used how you... properly, and you're going to hear them used improperly. And your yeah. uncle Ron always uses them properly, so you're going to have to learn them some way. May as well be right here. That's right. Those That's puppies. right. By the way, I love how you say the word, and then how you say the profanity, and then spell K I D S S. That's amazing. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm seeing a lot of people ask what you're working on now, or like what you were planning to be working on now um like has you has can you tell us what you were working on and if it's like been, if it's been affected by all this well we are actually in the middle of a movie that's been probably 40 percent shot already called nightmare alley um directed by guillermo del toro starring yes. bradley cooper kate blanchett rooney mara um david strafan richard mm -hmm. jenkins um I'm, I'm, I'm willem defoe it's an amazing the hell remake cast. of a film that was made in 48 with Tyrone Power. I'm in the film and it was 40% shot and we're on hold because as is, you know, the case with absolutely everything in the world, all non-essential activity has been um, shelved for the moment. So yeah. we're hoping to get back as soon as possible. But yeah, that's the project I'm working on right now. That project sounds amazing. I know, I know it's primarily shot in Toronto, but you know where else they shot it? 
Buffalo, Buffalo New York. <laughs> There's a lot of things shooting there right now. I think yeah. Del Toro is a huge fan of Buffalo. I think he's a big fan of the food, especially. I think they gave him a key to the city recently. Uh, <laughs> we got we got some. I know we're getting we're hearing from a lot of Sons of Anarchy fans. So I gotta ask you something there before we wrap up. Like give give us like one of your you know such a great show. Give us like one of your 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 favorite memories from that experience. My, I mean, I wish I could think of. Uh the quintessential anecdote, you know, to make you fall down and laugh. And, but, um, I, you know, I'm not really good at coming up with those, although they were up plenty. You can only imagine with all that testosterone and all those dudes on set every day, uh, there were lots and lots of great anecdotes. But for me, the, the quintessential memory of the show is the guys sitting around in what we call the chapel at the Redwood table um having our meetings about who lived who died what our moves were going to be what our moves were not going to be um i was in the company of an incredible um ensemble of actors you know charlie and kim and theo and ryan and bill lucking and uh, mark boone jr and you know um i'm missing some people i'm sure dl la brava um but, you know, what was going down while the camera was rolling was as exciting a bunch of shit as I've ever participated in. And what was going down between takes when the camera was not rolling was equally exciting and fraught with joy and laughter and the greatest bunch of guys I've ever had the privilege of hanging out with on a set. So those are my, that's my greatest memory of Sons. You still in touch with those guys? I see a lot of them. I see. T oh, I forgot Tommy Flanagan. I, I, nice. Tommy, please forgive me. I mean, my favorite m motherfucker <laughs> of all of them. But I see Tommy a lot. I see Ryan Hurst a lot. I see Theo every now and again. I see Kim Coates every now and again. Nice. So yeah, we 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 are a brotherhood, and we are a hard pressed family that you know um, endured. The, the trials and tribulations and so we're going to stay friends for life awesome awesome uh well i gotta i gotta let you go uh this has been this has been amazing i want to i want to shout out everyone that's joined us i want to do one last cheers with all of you guys right here thank you guys for joining totally normal happy hour on yahoo entertainment instagram live thank you so much ron you can follow ron at at pearl mutations I'm at DJ Kevlar. Um, and we got to do this again because, as you mentioned, I think this show is going to be on for a long time with or without. I wish, you the very, I wish you the very best. And thank you for making me one of your very first, uh, you know, guinea pigs. Thank you. Th thank you, Uncle Ron. <laughs> Great to talk to you. Big hugs. Take care, guys. Stay safe, brother. Stay safe, everybody. Likewise. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Okay. Peace out. Bye.